Go. Okay, so we left off, and we are determining the rejection regions. So we already know the critical values are plus and minus 1.96. So our rejection regions are going to be negative infinity to negative 1.96, unioned with 1.96 to plus infinity. Okay? And so the picture is, remember, that we've got our normal distribution, and we've got our little um, negative 1.96. And this is 1.96, right? So the idea is that the rejection, the rejection region, hmm, okay, the rejection region is going to be 1.96 to plus infinity and negative infinity to negative 1.96, okay. So we've got that. Now our test statistic. Again, because we are um, doing a hypothesis test for the mean, our test statistic is going to be x bar. So let's see. What do we say x bar? Um, what value of x bar is given? 6,900. So x bar equals 66,900. Now let's get ready to calculate our standardized test statistic. So our standardized test statistic is given by this formula, which is going to be equal to 66,900 minus 68,000 divided by, what was our sigma? Our sigma was 5,500. over square root of 20. So what do we get? We can already tell it should be a negative number because 66,900 is less than 68,000. We should get negative 11 divided by 5,500 over square root of 20. And that's going to give us 0 0.894427. Okay, so our standardized test statistic is z equals negative 0 0.894. Okay. Sketch of the distribution with the rejection regions. We kind of did that over here. Let me just copy and paste. Okay. And if I wish I could blow it up, resize, let me blow it up. So now we've got our rejection region. And let me add a little bit of detail to this because we always want to label the mean and the standard deviations, I mean, in the inflection point, and say that this is a z-distribution. So our standardized test statistic is negative 0 0.894, which would be somewhere, I'm going to use um, a different color here, which would be somewhere like right here. Right, so this would be negative... This is just a rough estimation, negative 0 0.8944. So our standardized test distribution is not in the rejection region, so we will fail to reject. And to interpret our decision, 
in the context of the original claim, we fail to reject H naught, which means there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. There is not sufficient evidence. to support the claim that the engineers are paid less than $68,000 at the company, right, are paid less than $68,000. So essentially, they took a sample of just 20 people, so maybe it was uh, 20 friends that knew each other, and said, hey, how much money do you make? How much money do you make? And those 20 people made on average, right, the average of those 20 people, those 20 engineers, average salary was $66,900. So they're thinking, hey, man, or hey, woman, uh, Maybe this is a problem. Maybe everybody is underpaid. Everyone is underpaid, right, compared to that other company. But um, fail the hypothesis test. There's just not enough evidence to support the claim that all of the engineers, that the average of the average salary of all of the engineers is less than 68000 Okay, so I'm going to skip going over that because we did that kind of in detail before. And let's do this example. This is our last example of uh, testing using a rejection region. So a researcher claims that the mean cost of, so automatically I'm reading and I recognize this mean cost. So this, I know that I'm looking for a hypothesis test uh, for the mean of raising a child from birth to age two in the U.S. is 13960 I've also been told that this is my claim. So let me just go ahead and write down that my claim is, so my claim is that the average cost, the mean cost of baby, in the U.S. is $13,960. So I'm going to take this claim and translate it into a um, mathematical statement, which is going to be mu equals 13,960. I need to write the complement. Mu is not equal to 13,960. Which one is the null hypothesis? The first statement is the null hypothesis, and the second statement is the alternative hypothesis, and the null hypothesis happens to be our claim. Okay, so I've written down, I've figured out my, my null and alternative hypothesis and my claim. So let's continue. All right, and now let's uh, copy our stats. So these are going to be important. Now, um, let's see here. Our test statistic is going to be X bar equals 13,725. Our standardized test statistic is going to be Z equals 13,725 minus 13,960 divided by sigma, which is 2,345 over square root of 500. And that is equal to 
2.2408, okay? Now, uh, we need to determine our critical values. So in order to determine the critical values, we need, uh, let's see here, so I'm gonna just draw a sketch. Now, I have a two-tailed test because mu is equal to, uh, our alternative hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 13,960. So I know I have a two-tailed test. Okay. Um, and I need this area to be equal to half of alpha, so 0 0.05. And also this area needs to be equal to 0 0.05. So to find my critical values, I'm going to use the syntax inverse norm. I'm going to put in the area of 0 0.05. My mean is 0. My standard deviation is 1. And what do I get? Reject the claim. In the final exam, I will not require you to use p-values versus rejection regions, but you need to know how to do um, both methods so that you can do your homework. Okay, thank you.